Hi, today I am here with another video about cord prolapse that is one of the main obstetrical emergency. Cord prolapse means it is a descent of the umbilical cord through the cervix alongside or past the presenting part in the presence of ruptured membrane. That is cord prolapse means the umbilical cord will be lying on one side of the presenting part or in front of the presenting part after the rupture of the membrane that is known as cord prolapse. If it is lying alongside of the presenting part that is known as occult cord prolapse and if it is lying in front of the presenting part it is known as overt cord prolapse. Cord presentation means it's a presence of one or more loops of umbilical cord between the presenting part and the cervix without membrane rupture. Here actually the membranes are intact and the umbilical cord is lying in front of the presenting part. See this picture here this is the umbilical cord this is the fetal head the presenting part and here if the membranes are ruptured this is known as cord prolapse and if the membranes are intact if here fetal membranes are there that is known as cord presentation. The incidence of cord prolapse is ranges from 0.1 to 0.6 percentage but in breach presentation the incidence is little more high it comes up to 1 percentage. And it is more common in male babies and the incidence is more in the case of multiple gestations. The risk factors for cord prolapse include there are several risk factors for the cord prolapse. The things that will prevent the close application of the presenting part to the lower part of the uterus or the brim. That is what I have told you that if the cephalic presentation is there and if it is getting engaged that is a well fitted presenting part. If other than the cephalic presentation if any other presentation is there it is not a well fitted presenting part. So space will be there through the sides of the presenting part and the maternal pelvis. So the umbilical cord may escape through this space. So the conditions which are making that space will lead to the cord presentation or cord prolapse. In these circumstances that is in because of any one or other reason if the umbilical cord is lying alongside or in front of the presenting part and in that cases if the membranes are ruptured that leads to the cord prolapse. Cord abnormalities like nodes in the umbilical cord, low amount of water and jelly those things also may lead to the cord prolapse. Fetal hypoxia and acidosis that may alter the turgidity of the cord and predispose to the prolapse. That is that uh, turgidity or that capacity or contractile capacity of the or that mobile capacity of the cord will be decreasing and that may lead to the prolapse of the cord. Risk factors for the cord prolapse include uh, obstetrical manipulation that is if you are doing external cephalic version, internal podalic version, uh, if you are doing the manual rotation of the baby, in those cases there is a chance for cord prolapse. Otherwise, if you are performing artificial rupture of the membrane, especially if the presenting part is not engaged and if in that case if you are performing the artificial rupture of the membrane, that may produce the cord prolapse. The risk factors for the cord prolapse include multiparity. In the case of multiparous woman, laxity of the abdominal muscles will be there and pendulous abdomen also may be there because of these factors there is a chance for non-engagement and that may lead to the cord prolapse. Low birth weight baby that is if the weight of the baby is less than 2.5 kg in that case also the presenting part may not be a well fitting presenting part so there is a chance for presentation of cord prolapse. Prematurity in the case of prematurity also the size of the baby matters. Fetal congenital abnormalities for example, if the baby is having anencephaly, most probably the breech will be the presenting part. Otherwise, if any of the abnormalities are there, if abnormalities of the umbilical cord, in that cases, there is a chance for cord presentation. 
ബ്രീച്ച് പ്രസന്റേഷൻ ഇൻ ദ ബ്രീച്ച് പ്രസന്റേഷൻ ദ അംബ്ലിക്കൽ കോഡ് വിൽ ബി ലോ ലൈങ് വെൻ കമ്പയർ ഇൻ ദ സെഫാലിക് പ്രസന്റേഷൻ ഓഫ് കോഴ്സ് വെൻ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് ലൈങ് ഇൻ ദ ലോവർ സെഗ്മെന്റ് ഓഫ് ദ യൂട്ടേഴ്സ് ദർ ഇസ് എ ചാൻസ് ഫോർ പ്രസന്റേഷൻ അതർ പ്രസന്റേഷൻസ് ആർ ട്രാൻസ്ഫേഴ്സ് ഒബ്ലിക് ആൻഡ് അൺസ്റ്റേബിൾ ലൈ ദീസ് പ്രസന്റേഷൻ ഇൻ ദീസ് പ്രസന്റേഷൻസ് ഓൾസോ വി നോ ദാറ്റ് ദ അംബ്ലിക്കൽ കോഡ് വിൽ ബി ഇൻ ദ ലോവർ സെഗ്മെന്റ് ഓഫ് ദ യൂട്ടേഴ്സ് ആൻഡ് ഇൻ ദ കേസ് ഓഫ് സെക്കൻഡ് ട്വിൻ that is in the case of multiple pregnancy if two babies are there most probably one baby will be in the normal cephalic presentation and the other baby may be in a different position so there is a chance for that because of that there is a chance and second thing after the delivery of the first baby when we are trying for the labor uterine process contractions all those process is happening there is a chance for prolapse of the umbilical cord of the second baby and next one is polyhydramnias in the case of polyhydramnias due to the excessive intrauterine pressure when this amniotic membrane is rupturing already excessive intrauterine pressure is there due to the high amount of amniotic fluid and when the membrane is rupturing there will be a sudden gush of amniotic fluid due, due to this high pressure and when fluid is forcing, flowing with much force along with that fluid the umbilical cord also may come out and en- unengaged presenting part if the presenting part is not engaged when the uterus is contracting or when the membranes are rupturing there is a chance for pre- presentation of the cord and the other things are low placenta that is placenta previa other abnormal placentation in these cases actually the placenta will be low lying so that may leads to the prolapse and fetus male gender actually the exact cause of cord presentation or uh, exact cause for more incidence of cord presentation in the male baby is unknown but it's seen commonly in the male baby when comparing to the female babies next one the procedures like artificial rupture of the membrane vaginal manipulation of the fetus with the ruptured membrane external cephalic version internal podalic version stabilizing induction of labor application of fetal scalp electrode these things may leads to the cord presentation prevention of cord prolapse now let us see how can we prevent this cord prolapse women with transverse oblique or unstable lie should be offered elective admission to hospital at 37 weeks of gestation or sooner if there are signs of labor or suspicion of ruptured membrane because already we know that in case of transverse oblique and unstable lie the umbilical cord is low lying so if the onset of labor or if the membranes are rupturing there is a chance for cord presentation and cord prolapse also if cord presentation is there and when it is rupturing that may become cord prolapse so in that case you should go for the earlier admission women with non cephalic presentation in that case if the presentation is other than cephalic if it is trans uh, shoulder presentation or breech presentation in that cases when you are perform actually you are not supposed to do the artificial rupture of the membrane and in case if the membranes are ruptured you should give admission to that lady fetal bradycardia is associated with cord prolapse and their presence should prompt vaginal examination speculum or digital examination should be performed when cord prolapse is suspected regardless of gestation see actually if cord prolapse is there you are not supposed to do the pervaginal examination here in some of the books they are telling that we can do the vaginal examination but i strongly recommend that we should not do because that may leads to the further irritation of the umbilical cord and that may produce the spasm of the cord so for specific, so for confirming it it is better for you to do the speculum examination artificial rupture of the membrane should be avoided whenever possible if the presenting part is not engaged pressure on the presenting part see if a membranes are not ruptured even if it is ruptured also and if the umbilical cord is lying alongside the presenting part when the presenting part is coming downward it may press the umbilical cord so when it is pressing the fetal blood supply will decrease and there is a chance for fetal hypoxia so actually it is your responsibility to release the pressure or avoid pressure on the umbilical cord so in that case what you can do means you can change the position of the baby a mother otherwise uh, you can fill the u- bladder with the urine or oh, these two th- these things will dislodge or move the presenting part upward and that may release the 
pressure on the presenting uh, or that may release the pressure on the umbilical cord rupture of the membrane should be avoided if on vaginal examination the cord is felt below the presenting part in labor already that we have seen a cesarean section should be done if cord prolapse is there and next we can see the management of cord prolapse when cord prolapse is diagnosed before full dilatation assistance should be immediately called that is you you need to have an obstetrician you need to have a pediatrician and uh, every the team should be ready for facing or managing an emergency situation and you should start an iv line you are supposed to take consent from the mother and you should make all the arrangements for the cesarean delivery and manual replacement of the cord above the presenting part to allow continuation of labor this practice actually you are not supposed to do because when you are doing it there is a chance for spasm of the cord But to prevent the vasospasm what you can do means if the umbilical cord is getting exposed to the external atmosphere in that case also vasospasm will occur in that case what you can do means you can just cover the umbilical cord with warm surgical saline soaked pads warm sterile surgical soaked uh, uh, soaked warm saline surgical pads otherwise in order to prevent the compression you can keep you can elevate the presenting part manually by using your fingers you can elevate the presenting part otherwise you can fill the urinary bladder already i have told you that cord presentation can be further reduced by adopting or changing the position of the mother to a knee chest position in that knee chest position you just see when the baby is moving downward here you can see when the baby is here if you are giving this position the baby is presenting part the baby will be moving towards our uterine fundus so the presenting part will get displaced from here so we can avoid the pressure on the umbilical cord elevation of the presenting part is thought to relieve the pressure on the umbilical cord and prevent mechanical vascular occlusion or manual elevation is performed by inserting a gloved hand or finger into the vagina and pushing the presenting part upward and excessive displacement if we are doing that is if the presenting part is moving excessively inside that also may leads to the cord collapse so you have to be careful when you are doing it remove the hand from the vagina once the presenting part is above the pelvic rim and apply continuous supra pubic pressure for maintaining that and if the decision to delivery delivery interval is likely to be prolonged if there is a chance for prolonged labor the elevation through the bladder filling may be practical see actually what you are doing means till the cesarean section or till we are going to that labor you are just avoiding or you are just reducing the pressure on the presenting part for that either you can uh, keep the presenting part upward manually by using the fingers and once if, if the if you have replaced you can just apply supra pubic pressure in order to prevent its return otherwise you can fill the bladder and bladder filling you can do by inserting a catheter but after that you can just uh, give 500 to 700 ml of saline into through that catheter then you can clamp so that will fill the bladder but before going for the delivery whether it is vaginal delivery or cesarean section you should empty the bladder and till we are going for the delivery or till uh, for getting time for preparing yourself for the cesarean you can give tocolytics for the woman if there is there are persistent fetal heart rate abnormalities after uh, if that is when the uterus is contracting again and again if heart rate variations are there for the baby in that case for reducing the uterine contraction you can give the tocolytics tocolytics are the drugs that will reduce the or suppress the uterine contraction Although the measures described above are potentially useful during preparation of for delivery they must not result in unnecessary delay A cesarean section is the recommended mode of delivery in the case of cord prolapse when vaginal delivery is not safe in order to prevent the hypoxia and acidosis That's all about the cord prolapse and further obstetrical emergencies will be dealing in the next videos Thank you for watching this video. Bye.